Hi everybody, so here is your do now for today. In a company, certain employees have access to a fax machine and scanners. Suppose that an employee will be selected at random. Find the probability that an employee will have access to, and then there are four questions for you to do. So I'd like you to pause the video, give it a try, and then check your answers and I'll go over it. The one hint that I will give you before you start is that it says to find the probability which means all of our answers should be fractions. Remember that a probability is a fraction between 0 and 1. It could be a percent or a decimal if you prefer, but we typically write a probability as an unreduced fraction. So like I said, pause the video, give it a try, and then when you're done, hit play and check your answers. So we're going to go over the do now. Remember, they're giving this to you as a Venn diagram. And in a Venn diagram, you have the two circles and you have the outer rectangle. Your total is everything put together. So before I do any of this, I want to find my total. So I'm going to add all of the numbers together to find my total. So when I do 43 plus 38 plus 16 plus 11, that gives me 108. So this is my total that I'm going to be using when I find these probabilities. So part A, I'm looking for the probability that somebody has access to a scanner. So my scanner is labeled here with an S. So that's this entire circle here, okay, this whole thing. So that's going to be 38 plus 16. So that gives me a total of 54 people who have access to a scanner, but they don't want the number of people, they want a probability. So that is 54 out of 108. Part B, not a scanner. So I'm actually going to leave my coloring here. So not a scanner is going to be everything that I did not color. So it's all of this. It's the outer rectangle and that other part of the circle. So that means it is 43 plus 11, which gives me 54. So my probability is 54 out of 108. Now you may have also recognized these as complements of each other, if you remember that vocabulary word. A complement means it happens or it doesn't happen. Together, they have to total to one. I either have access to a scanner or I don't. So you could have done one minus 54 over 108, because that was our answer from part A, and you would get the same thing. If that doesn't make sense to you, it's okay. Just go with the coloring that I did or the shading that I did in blue. So I'm just going to erase this before we move on. Okay. So C, I want to know who has access to a scanner and a fax machine. Remember that and is your overlap. Do this in a different color here. And is your overlap. So it's where the two circles overlap. It's this part in here. So it's just that number right here, which is... 38, hopefully you can still see it on your paper because I wrote over it on mine. 38 out of 108 because we want a probability. Okay. And then lastly, we are going to do a scanner or a fax machine. Remember that or means that I have to add or it means that I'm taking both circles. So I'm going to just go with both circles because I think it's easiest when you have the Venn diagram or have the picture to just take all of this because that's or. So that would be 43 plus 38 plus 16, which gives me 97. So the probability that somebody has access to a scanner or a fax machine is 97 out of 108. So that's the do now. Hopefully that made sense to you. That was a review of our previous Intro to Probability lesson, and now we're going to jump into our new material today. So our target, at the end of 42 minutes, I can interpret and find probabilities of two-way tables. Some new vocabulary, categorical data is the data that does not involve numbers and places individuals into categories. So it's 
the color of your hair or your grade level. There are options. You're in 10th grade, 11th grade, or 12th grade. Your hair color is blonde, brunette, redhead, things like that. Um, it's not going to be numerical data like an age. You could do an age range, but that would be categorical. But if you just are giving me an age, that's considered numerical. So we're thinking categories here. And when we organize categorical data, it's easiest to organize it in a two-way table. When we have a two-way table, that means I have a row and a column with different pieces of information. Um, marginal frequencies are located in the margins of the table, and they're the totals that represent the columns or the rows. Joint frequencies is a frequency count from two variables located in the intersection of a row and a column. And a relative frequency is going to be out of our total number of observations. So this is what we're going to be doing today. It's going to be the number in a given cell over the total for the table. So a two-way table can be set up something like this. Example one says, 1,000 students were surveyed and asked to identify their genders and to pick their favorite sport. The results were organized in the following two-way table. Okay, so the males, I listed everything going horizontal in the row, females horizontal, and then football, basketball, lacrosse, baseball, and soccer are your columns. Your totals, your overall total would be here. Your individual row and column totals would be either here or here. So before we jump into some problems, we're just going to see what this would look like. So describe the data that would be in cell A. So let's say in cell A there was the number 15. What does that 15 represent? That 15 would represent the number of males who chose football as their favorite sport. So the number of males who chose football as their favorite sport. How about the data in cell N? So first let's find cell N. That would be somewhere over here. So let's say we had 8 here. Okay, what would that 8 represent? That 8 would be the total number of people who chose basketball as their favorite sport. It would be males and females. So the total number of people, I'm just going to put males and females in parentheses so you know it was both, but you don't need to include that. Who chose basketball as their favorite sport. Obviously, I'm just making these numbers up. Um, if I'm surveying 1,000 students, these numbers would most likely be higher, but I'm just picking numbers right now. So we can even get rid of them. It doesn't really matter. Describe the data that would be in cell L. So cell L is over here. Okay. So let's say I had 300 here. Let's make a bigger number. So what does that represent? That would be the total number of females surveyed. It's not particular to what sport. It was all of them that chose football. It would be this whole entire column added together to give me my total of 300. Okay? And then lastly, they want to know, describe the data that would be in cell R. So R... I already have here. That is 1,000. We know that because if we go back to the question, it said 1,000 students were surveyed. So that bottom right cell is always the overall total number of people surveyed. So it's your overall Total number of students surveyed. So 
So hopefully that made sense to you. And if not, we're going to do a few more examples and we're actually going to be doing some numbers and not just describing um, and finding some probabilities. Example two, a random sample of 100 surveys. So this is my total. And as you notice, that's my total total, my overall total, everything in the bottom right cell. So a random sample of 100 surveys were collected, which asked males and females to choose which superpower they wish they had. Jill had a copy of the frequency table that summarized these 100 results. Unfortunately, she spilled part of her lunch on the copy. The following summaries were still readable. So we have males and females in my row. And then in the columns, it's your superpower. Fly, freeze time, invisibility, super strength, telepathy. And then I have my totals on the bottom and on the right as well. Part A, help Jill recreate the table by determining the frequencies for cells C, E, J, and Q. So if we take a look here, I'll just get out my highlighter for a second. C, E, J, and Q. Those are missing. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video, take a minute, and see if you can come up with the numbers that belong in those cells, and then we will go over them together. Okay, so for C, I worked with uh, invisibility. My total has to be 25, and I already know that I had 10. So in order to find C, I did 25 minus 10, which gave me 15. So I said that C was 15. Now you don't have to show this work, but I'm just showing it so this way you know in case you had difficulty or in case you got it wrong. Now let's go to super strength. Okay, so I once again worked with this column and J for me was equal to nine minus five, which gave me four. So J was four. So then when I went to the next one, the problem if I worked with the column is that I had two unknowns. So I had to pick either E or Q and work with the row first. Okay, so I chose E, it does not matter which one you chose first. So I chose E, so I chose to work this way. I knew that my overall total had to be 55, and I was missing this. So if you want, you could set up an equation. So E was equal to 12 plus 15 plus 15 plus 5 plus X equals 55. So this here gave me 47. So then when I solved for x, I got 8. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do this, so if you didn't do it the same way as me, that's fine, don't worry about it. So I knew that e was equal to 8. And now I could work in this direction for Q. Q was equal to 8 plus 3. That total had to be 11. Okay, so that was A. So sometimes you're going to be asked to find some missing pieces or most common thing that they're going to ask you to do, and they're not actually going to ask you, you'll have to realize, is you'll have to add in the totals. So sometimes these pieces here, the bottom row and the most right column are not there. You have to recognize that and then add up to find your totals. So let's jump into some probabilities. What is the probability that a randomly selected survey would prefer invisibility as his or her superpower? So remember, probability means I need a fraction, always. And we always keep it, or not always, but most likely, more often than not, we keep it as an unreduced fraction. So I have a total of 100 surveys to choose from. So that's my denominator. And I want to know how many of them would prefer invisibility. So I'm looking at invisibility. It doesn't specify male or female. So I want the total number of people who chose invisibility. So 25 out of 100. Part C, what's the probability that a randomly selected survey was a female? 
So my total that I'm choosing from is 100 surveys, and I want to know how many were females. So females, I'm going to the end. My females are 55 out of 100. D, what is the probability that a randomly selected student was a male and chose freeze time as his preferred superpower? So once again, I have 100 surveys to choose from. That's my denominator, my total. But this time I want to know male and freeze time. So when there's an and, you're going to find their crisscross. So here are the males. Let me get the highlighter out. These are the males. And then freeze time is here. So which ones are males and freeze time? That's this 16. If you show that crisscross and you match up, you take your finger and go from the males, go right from freeze time, go down where your fingers meet. That's where it's the males and freeze time. So that's 16. Sorry. And that is 16 out of 100. So this is still example two. I just put it on a new slide for us. I filled in those missing pieces because now we're going to talk about our union formula. So remember, this is for or. This is my symbol for or, okay? The probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, which is my overlap, okay? So, E, what is the probability that a randomly selected student was female or they chose super strength as her preferred superpower? So that's going to be the probability of a female plus the probability of super strength minus the probability of female and super strength. So I'm going to use my highlighter once again. So I have females, 55 out of 100, plus super strength, 9 out of 100, but these five people got counted twice. So I have to subtract them. So when I do 55 plus 9 minus 5, I'm going to get 59 out of 100. Okay? Do one more together. Let me just erase what I have up here so I can mark it up once again. What is the probability that a randomly selected student was a male or chose invisibility? So this is going to be the probability of a male plus the probability of invisibility minus the probability of male and invisibility. So if you have a highlighter or if you have um, a pencil maybe and you want to like circle like I'm doing and then erase them, just it might be helpful for you visually. Okay. So we have males, so that's 45 out of 100, plus invisibility, that's 25 out of 100, minus the crisscross or the overlap. So if I go back to my picture, what part was highlighted twice? This 10. That's the end. So minus 10 out of 100. So 45 plus 25 minus 10 is 60 out of 100.
Example three. Three animal shelters tallied the number of animals they rescued during one week. The table below summarizes these data. So I have dogs, cats, and rabbits, shelter one, shelter two, and shelter three. So the first thing you may notice, or hopefully you notice, is that the totals are missing. So anytime I see that, I always want to add in my totals. So what I'd like you to do is take a minute, pause the video, give it a try, see if you can find all of your totals, and then hit play to check your work. So going across first, um, 20 plus 40 plus 32 gave me 92. Cats, 45, 55, and 50 gave me 150. Rabbits, 6, 15, and 7 gave me 28. Going down, 20, 45, and 6, 71 animals in shelter 1. 40, 55, and 15, 110 animals in shelter 2. And 32, 50, and 7 gave me 89 animals in shelter 3. Whether you add up the totals going across or going down, you should get 270 total animals overall. All right, so if you want, pause the video, give these a try on your own, um, and then check your answers, but I'm going to work through them now. A, what is the probability of selecting a dog? So dogs is over here. I'm going to go to my total dogs. So I have 92 dogs overall out of 270 animals in total. What is the probability of selecting an animal at shelter 3? So here is shelter 3, this column here. So I have 89 animals at shelter 3 out of a total of 270 animals. What is the probability of selecting a rabbit and an animal at shelter 1? So here this column is shelter 1, but I only want the rabbits. So there's six rabbits at shelter 1 out of a total of 270 animals. And then lastly, D, what is the probability of selecting a cat or an animal at shelter 2? So. I'm going to mark this up to highlight it for us. A cat. And then shelter two. So when I go to do the math for that, I have 150 cats out of 270 plus. I have 110 animals at shelter two out of 270 minus that overlap here of 55 that I've counted twice because those 55 animals are both cats and at shelter two. So 150 plus 110 minus 55 gives me 205 out of 270. Remember probabilities are fractions and we want them to be unreduced most times. Um, if you did the symbols for part D, it would have been the probability of a cat plus the probability of shelter 2 minus the probability of a cat and shelter 2. Practice problems. So there are a bunch of practice problems here for you to complete. You are going to do those and then submit your answers via the form.